takes a while to understand that, what they were singing about. Maybe it's just me that has such a difficult time with that. But that's how it is. And ultimately, uh, God's way will show its value, its worth, and its rightness in time. It takes God time to show you. Know, it'll work out for good. Good to see everyone here. We are faced with adjustments, but then what's different? What's new? There's always those kind of things that have to be dealt with. And so let's keep praying for one another as we adjust to our circumstances and the changes that it may thrust on us. But uh, the Lord has a way. I've been reading the book the last couple of months. God will make a way. God will make a way. And a lot of times the deliverance we ask for is uh, not God's way for us. The deliverance we're asking him for uh, is not what God, is not the way that he's making. So the Lord help us to look for the way that God makes. Look for the way that God's opening up for us. Look for what God has Keep striving, keep struggling, keep plodding along. Don't quit. Just don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up your faith. Don't give up your standard. Don't give up your value. Don't give up your beliefs. Just keep plodding along. Don't quit. The Lord will help you to understand the way He has for you. Thank you for your prayers and this fast uh, journey I made. Uh, a betwixt and between kind of circumstance so. as well I'll just come get you you be in South Dakota and I'll I'll stop and pick you up and turn around and we'll come home it's about what we did but it was a good journey thank the Lord the Lord was able to help Ruth with this particular time of grief of another one of their clan gone and uh, she was able to help the family visit our daughters in the process. Spend some time with them. That's always valuable. Praise the Lord. Well, I saw my folks uh, as the years went by, as they got older. Uh, it seemed like much of their ministry was consumed with comforting the broken heart. Comforting the broken heart. Picking up pieces and helping people to get back on their feet. Find a way to deal with their loss. Well, that's kind of how it's turning out to be anymore. I don't know how many trips east for other reasons wind up being trips to comfort the brokenhearted and the grief stricken. But that's okay, that's how it is. And thank you for being there for us in our grief. Thank you for the fine gift that uh, Sister Darla passed on to us and uh, all of your signatures and comfort you've shown in our time of grief as well. The Lord bless you and strengthen you and keep you and encourage each one of you. It's good to see Bill back here smiling. Yeah. I hope I can drive over the mountains when I'm 92. <laughs> I like Bill. Yeah, but, uh, anyway, thank you, Bill, for coming to visit and spend time with all of us. In your Bibles, if you want to read with me, Let's pray for one another as we work on adjustments. This, uh, this COVID thing really uh, threw some changes in our lives. And also, it should have been a huge wake-up call to everybody. A huge wake-up call to realize just how quickly your life and my life and all of our whole circumstance can change. That fast. It wasn't, it wasn't just a quick little, uh, you know, it wasn't just a long, steady thing. This just turned over just like that. And everybody was stuck at home. No church, no businesses, no travel, on and on and on. You ever saw that in your lifetime? I didn't. I've never seen that in my lifetime, but we saw how quickly this can happen. Wake up call, lights on, lights on. This is not the time to give up faith. 
This is not the time to quit praying. This is not the time to be fooling around with spiritual things and just thinking you got all the time in the world to pursue your dreams and do the things that you love. This is the time to buckle down and get a hold of faith and spiritual and uh, help others to wake up. So, Lord, help us as we adjust to these things. We're going to have to make some adjustments with the church, but, oh, we got good, brilliant minds and hearts working on it. Lord's well, going to help us to have some direction with uh, how we do church, how we do uh, this uh, particular need among us. So you pray for each other. Let's pray for each other as we pick our way along and make some adjustments. Make some adjustments. Praise God. Jesus, what did he say there? He said, forsake not the what? Assembling of ourselves together. That means that we're always going to have to find a way to get together to pray, to preach, to teach, to sing, to fellowship, drink good coffee, read scripture, and whatever else. We've got to always find a way to do that. Help us, Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. There. This is not the time to give up your faith. This is not the time to give up on your doctrine. If it's the Word of God, if it's the Word of God, stick with the Word of God. And uh, Lord, help us to get a hold of truth and stick by it. Your best understanding of God, stay with it. Hold fast. Stay with it. First Timothy chapter 3. Let's pick up reading. <laughs> really a gloomy, a gloomy reading. But let's read it. First Timothy 3 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. You know, as far back as I can remember, and as far back as whenever mom and dad got into the faith, that's the tune they sung. To me, this is clear back in the mid mid-50s, early 50s. The perilous times are going to come. Well, it always seemed like there was perilous times upon us. But it never had the same connotation like it has today. Like it has today. You know, back in 1955, there was no such thing as a public internet. Personal computer. Cell phone. Or telephone, period. There was no such thing any of this kind of stuff. And it all changed and switched over. And it was supposed to be all for marvelous progress and uh, good of humanity, but it's wound up becoming perilous times. It's wound up becoming perilous times. Let's keep reading here. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. See if this sounds like people you read about and see and hear. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. First, second Timothy, I'm sorry. You were right, I was wrong. Second Timothy, chapter three, verse one. See if those were see if those words ring right. They match better. <laughs> For this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Stop reading there. Well, that's quite a list of uh, trouble, isn't it? <laughs> it's quite a list of trouble. But uh, our world is full of it. Our world is full of it. 
We live in the times and days where they was talking about there. Times when we're supposed to look up when you see these things come to pass. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Whenever you see this kind of becoming more prevalent. I saw an ad here not too long back. I had a picture of somebody with a hood on. And the caption says, the barbarians are here. What's the connotation of that? You remember the uh, old Roman Empire? In its glory days, it was conquering everybody and had roads and uh, messengers and great economy and great big buildings and was really in a heyday. But there came a day when the barbarians came. But that only happened after that great civilization started doing all that stuff there that we were read. Men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, blasphemy, on and on and on. When all that started to take over that great empire, that's when things started to crumble. Economy began to go. Uh, order began to disintegrate. Righteousness was hard to be found. Decency, morality, it was all just going down, wiping out. Uh, <coughs> then who stepped up? In came the barbarians. The barbarians moved in now and took advantage of the lack of order, took advantage of the lack of morality, took advantage of the lack of light, took advantage of the lack of uh, righteousness, and began to just move in and take it over. You know, darkness always moves in whenever light dims and goes out. It's just kind of automatic, you know that. Turn the lights on, turn the lights on the lights on, and then it comes back into order. Well, these kind of things are what we're up against. These are the days. This is what we are up against. And it's going to make us force, it's going to force us to ask ourselves if we have what it takes to live out the faith. Not just make a life, but it's going to ask what it takes. Do you have what it takes to live out the faith? The faith. Now, I'm kind of interested to see what happens, what kind of flack comes out of, did you see the picture of the president walking across the yard with the Bible on his way to some church or synagogue? Did you see that picture somewhere? How do you suppose that'll go over? Do you suppose people will just be in awe? Give him praise, give him thanks, and thanking God. You suppose that'll happen? Boy, I'll be surprised if it doesn't happen. <laughs> We're in the days that the prophet spoke of, the perilous times. People heady, high-minded, traitors, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, truce breakers, violent. God. We're in those days. Do you have what it takes to live out God's word? Do you have what it takes to live out God's word? It's going to take everything you've got to maintain your faith as you've learned it. As you've learned it. And it's going to take everything we got to live out the faith as we learned it and as we endeavored to try to teach it. And preach it. Did anyone of you out there beat them? Oh, it must not be. It turned off. <laughs> Are you going to be able to maintain praying, for instance, and getting answers and seeing things transpire? Are you going to be able to maintain belief in righteousness? Are you going to be able to Keep believing in the church and the study of the Bible. Are you going to be able to keep believing in the standards of righteousness and modesty and godliness and fairness? Fairness. All these great themes that we grew up with, that's just a part of life, but it's not a part of life anymore. It's not a part of life anymore. 
truce breakers. You know, you know what's really, uh, you want a real experience? Go buy life insurance. Go buy life insurance. And come away with a great understanding of how it works. <laughs> laugh, laugh. <laughs> to use it, to use an old uh, church uh, expression, the house always wins. <laughs> Las Vegas church. <laughs> the house always wins. I mean, there's there's so much extra fine print. And all, all it goes to say, if you could just kind of boil it down, all it goes to say is, you're going to get this much, and the company's going to get this much of your money. You're going to get this much in the end, if you're lucky, and the company's going to get all this pay you give them. Compounded. And you're going to get this much. You say, that's not, that's not fair. You know, 20 years ago, Somebody said 65% uh, of the American uh, finances are tied up in insurance. 65% of America's wealth is tied up in insurance. Can you believe that? And you get down and try to cash it in and see how big a deal you get. <laughs> That's the way we do it. Yeah. Get, uh, get to doing some work on some of these houses. Uh, my son's been doing some work on a house we live in. And others have uh, gotten into having to do some repair work. And get in there and you find out just how many corners were cut. What kind of cheap labor had been done on the original building. Just to what? Not have to spend so much money to, get, to take a bigger cut out of it. Truce breakers. False advertisers. On and on and on it goes. It, it's just the tip of the iceberg, you know, it's a drop in the plucket of trying to understand the kind of world we live in, the way that it measures things. So do you have what it takes to maintain good faith, good honesty, good love, good fairness, good teachings to your children, those of you that are raising children? A lot of things that uh, I wish I understood, uh, I did finally understand. Now my kids are 40 years old. <laughs> now my kids are 40 years old. Man, I missed my shot there, Paul. Man, I'm coming so slow. So those of you that have young kids yet, get a hold of it now. Get a hold of it now. If they're going to know what real fairness is, you're going to have to get it in their heads now. If they're going to know what real honesty is, they're going to have to get it in now. If they're going to know anything about God and good and morality and faith, they got to get it in now. Get it in now. Do you have what it takes to live out God's Word? One, in the daily life. In the daily life. First thing I heard after I got saved was, uh, how do devotions? What's devotions? Well, you take time to pray and read the Bible. Just personally. Okay. Well, some days I did, some days I didn't. Yeah. I know all the rest of you, man, you did it every day faithfully, but I wasn't that way. Yeah. They say, well, did you have a hard time? Yes, lots of hard times. Did you ever learn to get that down? I did learn to get it down better. But after about 20 years, and I had some real hard times, some definitely difficult, deep down inside the soul, difficult, hard times. Boy, you know something, prayer really took on a lot more meaning by that time. It took on more strengthening. And the, the value of it began to just kind of say, Oh Lord, if you don't help me, I'm done. If you don't give me something, I'm finished. It's over. And about that time, the Lord sends someone into my life or a message of some kind or a revelation of some kind or sometimes a financial help 
or a friend, in comes the help of the Lord. The Lord helped me to pick up and carry on. Until I begin to understand the value of getting hold of God, which is what that whole matter of devotions was all about at the beginning. Learning to get a hold of God. That's a daily life thing. Somewhere in your day, talk to God. Meditate on His Word somewhere, sometime during your day. You say, well, I, I do, but it isn't much. Hey, it isn't much is a lot more than a lot of people do because they don't do anything at all. Daily life, daily life. Somewhere in your daily life, live out God's Word. Pick somebody up, lift somebody up, give someone a kind word, give someone a smile, learn to become a caregiver. You say, I'm not a missionary. Yeah, you are. Every child of God is a missionary. Trust me on that. You know, I think of Sister Janet there. She uh, went out to uh, Indian country as a missionary. Had some very difficult days. Left one field and went to another field and served there for a while. Long, long. And then that came to an end. And she moved to Missoula. And found a job there. He said, well, is that missionary work? Well, she's still doing missionary work. You don't ever quit. What God laid on your heart to do and be, you don't ever quit. You don't ever stop. You're called of God to be a child of God. You never quit. You never quit. You get back up, dust off, make some adjustments, and keep going. It's a daily task. Living out God's word, a daily task. Amen. So I find a way to do that. Sometimes it's just family. You try to pick them up. Sometimes you don't feel like picking anybody up, man. But a smile isn't hard to give, is it, Paul? You've given plenty out. With some, with some jokes to go with it. Kind word, a hand here, a hello, how are you here? A word on the phone, a cup of coffee, a smile, pat on the back, you're lifting. God's word working in you, you're lifting, you're here. You take time to worship and take in. You take time to mix and mingle and take in. You take time to give and lift up. You go out and face your daily world where there's not much of that, but you're there. You're there living out God's Word. Do you have what it takes to live out God's Word? A lot of people don't appreciate the things of God, but if they see you, eventually as you live out for the Lord, you begin to develop what's called influence. As time goes by and you keep walking with God, all these little daily things one day will translate into influence. When influence begins to become something that God can use, all a person has to do is think about you. And what you are to them is what either lifts them or sinks them. If you're mean and nasty and ugly to somebody, when they think of you, guess what? Like, have you ever uh, had a balloon to full and you didn't tie the end and you let it go? What the balloon do? And just kind of string down and drop to the ground. When you don't do the daily things of serving the Lord and keep pumped up and keep your soul fed, that's what happens with your influence. But if you'll keep pumped up, keep talking to God, keep touching through, keep doing missionary work, which is personal, just loving people, keep it up. When people think of you, lifts. It lifts. It might be little, but that may be all you need. It lifts. It lifts. It lifts. 
A lot of you know that already. We're just reinforcing it. Some of you need a little encouragement with it. Pick it up. It's the daily talking to God. It's the daily tuning into the Word. It's the daily giving out. It's the daily receiving what God gives to you. The daily life. The behavior. That's the part that affects everybody because that's what they see in here. But then it's the values. It's the observance of the standards of the Word of God. It's the observance of the faith and the behavior. It's the observance of the community. See, so we respect one another in community. We respect one another in community. Yeah, it works like that. We fellowship together in good uh, faith when we're in community because we share the same values. We share a lot of the same basic things and we feel good about that. We're happy with that. We work to observe and maintain these things. Can't give that up. Don't give up. Whatever level standard of good you have in your life, don't give it up. Don't give it up. Build it up if you can. Build it up if you can. Do not forsake. Do not forsake the values that God gave to you. Either in your family, growing up, or in your school that you went to, or in the faith that you learned from getting saved and mixing and mingling. Don't give up your standards of righteousness. Do not. Work to keep them. Maintain them. You lose everything, it's hard to get back. I've got lots of family. They shucked it all, what they learned. And they've never retrieved it back. Never got it back. You should see their kids. You should see the kids the way the kids are. It's tough. We got lots of family and friends that it's tougher now. If they had kept the faith better, there are things that would be in place to support and strengthen. We have to work on this, folks. We gotta work on this. You say, well, I, I've made some mess ups. That's okay. What we say about that? That's why we're still here. That's why we're still here. That's exactly what we've done for 45 years. And a, few, and a few couple of years ago, longer, beyond that. That's what you've got to do. The values, the observation, the ob observance of the standards of community. Take to the beliefs the principles of the walk of faith. Take to the beliefs. We sung about it today. The old rugged cross is one of the old beliefs. Stick to it. Stick to it. You may not understand it fully. That's okay. You stick to it and work on it. Work on it to understand. Everything you don't understand of the faith, work on it. Work on it. Study. Work on it. Pray about it. Ask questions. Learn the basic fundamentals of the faith. The cross, the blood, the Holy Ghost, the Father, the Son, angels, heaven, hell, soul energy, influence, spiritual power, the wives of the devil, so that you know where to stand up, raise the standard, turn the light on, Amen. learn the beliefs, the standards, the principles, of the walk of faith. Why is that? Because we're in perilous times. It's going to take everything you've got to keep spiritual. Everything you've got to keep spiritual. Last, the reality of origin. The reality of origin. Remember what I've been saying? Connect your faith to a concept of origin. Connect your faith to a concept of origin. Why is that? Because if God created all things, that means there's a universal law for all things. That's right. A universal law. If there's a universal law set by the Creator, you've got no choice in the matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
if uh, if we are if this whole thing is a result of an explosion, well, you can you can decide anything you want then. <laughs> hey, if monkeys came from uh, rhinos, you can believe that if you want. <laughs> if gorillas came from dinosaurs, you can believe anything you want. If a one-cell creature lived a million years to evolve into something else, you can believe what you want. You're crazier than I thought. <laughs> but if God, if God created the heavens and the earth, then there's universal law, which all mankind is subject to one day, right. now or later. Yes. Universal law. Yes. Connect your faith to a concept of origin. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There's universal law. There's a plan. There's hope for all mankind. So, don't let the perilous times stop you up, get you all, oh, so you just don't know what to do. Just get into the Word, keep steady, and the Lord will make a way for you. Praise the Lord. We got hope, folks. We got hope. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, help us today. Lord, we've been in a crisis for months now, working to adjust our thinking, our feelings, our lives, our families, our jobs, our church, our faith, our ministries, our travel. Lord, a lot of things have come into adjusting time. Give us patience, Lord, in our hearts. Give us a fresh new baptism of the Holy Ghost and of fire and of love goodness of righteousness, Lord, strengthen each person of faith here today. Help us to rise up, Lord, and move up a step. Get closer to God. Love one another. Lift each other up. Pray for each other. Pray for our nation. Lord, bless our nation with light. Turn the light on yes. this prayer. Go with each one now. Protect each one of our people here. Be with Patty today as she's struggling. And some others are struggling, Lord, we just pray in Jesus' name. You'll reach out and touch our friends and loved ones that are struggling here today. And for each one that is here, bless them, lift them, encourage them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you. Keep encouraged.